Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I actually still don't have a name for what I want to call this channel. I've been calling my episodes Legal Insights with Debello Mutswani, but I also don't want you guys to forget that I'm your sister-in-law. So I don't know if I should change the name to just sister-in-law and then also just let you into a little bit of everything that I like. Because as you've noticed by now, I really like makeup and beauty routines and eating healthy and working out and reading books. So I'm not sure if I should just stick to legal insights with Tabello Moswani, which might be a little bit too long, or if I must put the name of the topic, I don't know how this YouTube thing works, guys, or if I must put the name of the topic, uh, for example, if I'm speaking on spousal ma maintenance, must I just say episode five, spousal maintenance, or uh, spousal maintenance with Tabello Moswani, or spousal maintenance with your sister-in-law, I really don't know guys so any suggestions any comments that you have um, try to stay away from like something that's completely outside of law so please give me like a sister in law -y, um something that will still show that I'm your sister in law because I'm very very um, interested in continuing this journey with you guys and just educating my sisters on the various legal aspects of the law which pertain to them you know um empowering women sorry the neighbors are busy with renovations so distracting empowering my sisters and um just making sure that you know your rights when it comes to child maintenance when it comes to marriage when it comes to divorce when it comes to customary marriages when it comes to insurance property renting property selling property buying property um, and yeah, basically any aspect of the law that you can think of, which I also think will have a benefit to me teaching you is what I definitely want to share on this channel. Now, coming back to what I'd like to discuss today is going to be a very brief episode, but this is particularly for my sisters who've already started, um, considering marriage and obviously speaking about marriage with their partner. And I just want to let you guys know of the different marriage regimes that exist in South African law. And this applies to customary marriages, it applies to civil marriages, it applies to civil unions. First things first, civil unions is a, is a union that enjoys the same rights as a marriage, uh, except the only difference is that this is between same-sex partners. If you are a heterosexual couple, you can still enter into a civil union if you do not want to go through the process of obviously going to church and saying your vows and your I do's or whatever the case is. If you completely just want to remove your relationship or the marriage or the union from the church aspect, you can get married um, through under the Civil Union Act. And then I'll move on to civil marriages, which are concluded under the Marriages Act. And those are the marriages that are recognized between uh, different sex partners, man and a woman. And those are the ones that are, you know, concluded at church most of the time or concluded by a priest instead of an officiator or a marriage officer, let me say. Um, and, and, and those obviously only recognize monogamous relationships. So a man can't be in a civil marriage if he's already in, um, you know, he, sorry, he can't be in a second marriage if he is in a civil marriage. And then lastly, I'll touch on customary marriages, which is my favorite by now, you know, um, and customary marriages enjoy the same rights as couples who are married under civil unions or civil marriages. The only difference with a customary marriage is basically a man can have more than one wife never be me <laughs> um surprisingly i am married under customary law but my partner and i have had conversations around whether there'd ever be a second wife and he's assured me that he's not looking into having a second wife and i promise you if it ever gets to that we'd obviously have to have another conversation um let me jump right into it so under south african law there are two main matrimonial property regimes that are recognized, and that is marriage in community of property and marriage out of community of property. Like I said to you, these regimes apply across the board between civil unions, civil marriage, and customary marriage. So first things, I'll start with being married in community of property, which in South Africa is the default system if you have not signed an anti-nuptial contract before concluding the marriage. And with marriage in community of property, 
you and your husband um, share all the profits of the estate, the joint estate, and you also bear the burden of the losses made by the joint estate. This means that um, if I use an example of an apple, so you come into the relationship, he comes into the relationship uh, with all his debts, with all your debts, with everything you've made in your life, with your estate, he comes in with everything he's made in his life and you guys make one apple and it's called a joint estate. So everything of yours becomes one, one big apple. And what happens when you guys divorce is that the apple is then cut down the middle and he walks away with 50% and you walk away with 50%. So this happens whether or not one of the parties were working, whether or not one of the parties had debt in their own name um, and whether or not the one of the parties you know, has this built this huge empire, it's going to get 50% cut down the middle. Now the challenges with being married in community of property exist in the fact that obviously you've now inherited each other's debts. So if one is a reckless spender and they are horrible with their finances, this is going to affect you um, and you will also be declared insolvent. And if a party goes under debt review, then so does the spouse because you guys are married in community of property. So there are a lot of issues obviously around debt especially that you know you want to try to avoid and you don't want to sort of get yourself mixed up with that, especially if you know that you have your finances on lock. Do not marry in community of property if you are a realist, if you can imagine that 10 years down the line, one of you is going to be heavily affected financially and you don't want to affect the joint estate of the marriage. Another example I want to give ladies is consider a situation where you've been married for say 10 years in community of property and for whatever reason your husband loses his job. After losing his job you also learn that he's actually got a child outside of the marriage that he had maybe six years ago. So obviously after you got married, he then got a bit naughty and got involved and got himself a child. Over and above him losing his job, you learn that there's an existing maintenance order against him, meaning that he has to pay monthly contribution towards this extramarital child and obviously support the child financially. And because you are the only breadwinner and you're married in community of property, the court can come and investigate your bank account to find out how much you're actually contributing towards the marriage and the court can just declare that this portion of the joint estate will go towards the maintenance order because the maintenance order is a debt against the joint estate. This inevitably means that you will be supporting your husband's extramarital child. Consider that before getting married in community of property. Um, I know I wouldn't like want to support someone else's child. I mean, children are good and all and whatever, but I don't want to support someone else's child. The second regime that is recognized under South African law is marriage out of community of property. And marriage out of community of property means that the parties concluded an antenuptial contract before they got married. So with customary marriages, I would encourage people to conclude this contract before they start the Lobola negotiations, very important, because most of the time you find that Lobola negotiations start on a particular date and end on a different date, or sometimes the families come together that one time and have already they, on that one day conclude everything and declare the party's husband and wife. So in order to avoid this overlap of when Lobola is first paid and when it's finished, it's best to just do the antenuptial contract at least a month or two before you and um, before the uncles come to your house, to your family house. Uh, another thing I want to say about out of community of property is that you can either be married with or without accrual. Marriages without accrual are basically considered to be marriages out and out. And going back to my apple example, this means you come with your apple, he comes with his, you guys get married and each maintain your apples. So you and your debts and um, your estate stay as one, him and his debts and his estate remain one. And you guys can obviously make this choice to share property during um, your marriage, can buy property in each other's names, 50-50, whatever the case is, you are married, but these apples never become one. 
meaning he can be sued in his own name you can be sued in your own name and his maintenance order uh, for his child or child outside of the marriage will never be your debt or your burden to carry and then once you guys divorce or once a party dies he walks away with everything he came with you walk away with everything you came with and that's the end of the story then there's marriage without um a crew with out now i'm confused then there's marriage with a cruel sorry about that then there's marriage with a cruel with the cruel takes me back to my apple example you guys he comes with his apple you come with your apple and during the marriage you guys can do everything you want to do together buy houses buy cars and this that but each of you um keep your respective estates right then if you guys divorce or when a party um, dies and there was the inclusion of the accrual system what that means is that the apple which has grown the most in size um, and the apple which has shown little or no growth will sort of be set off against each other so the difference between the two estates I don't know how to do it with an apple okay so the difference between the two estates your small estate or his small estate and the big apple will then be calculated then the person whose estate has the smaller growth or no growth will get to enjoy in half of the difference between the two estates. Whew, that was a mouthful. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think there's like a whole math equation to that and I'm just a lawyer, so... But I, I, I understand how to do it and hopefully one of these days I can draw a diagram for people who didn't understand what I just said or you can rewind and sort of figure out what I said. But basically with accrual, the least growth and the most growth is um, set off against one another and the difference between the two estates will be split between both parties or, or, or the party with the least growth can enjoy some of the profits of the party whose estate has showed the most growth. Whew, there we go. Um, and yeah, so that is exactly how it is. Remember that with an anti-nuptial contract, it does have to be concluded by a notary so you have to go and consult for that you have to see an attorney get in touch with me and i will see to it that there is an attorney who will take care of drafting your anti-nuptial contract if you're not able to come to me because of distance or whatever the case is i do have a database of attorneys that are always willing to help the ladies who come through sister-in-law and by help ladies i mean that it is not pro bono you still have to pay your consultation fee and you still have to pay for the contract to be drafted and yeah basically the notary then takes care of the process for you you come in with your partner you sign there's an anti-nuptial contract they register it at the deeds office and from there you guys can get married and live your happily ever after I thoroughly enjoyed the session with you ladies and I hope you've learned something I pray and um, yeah, I just pray and hope that you and your partner are having open and honest conversations, especially when it comes to your finances, especially when it comes to whether or not, you know, the person you're looking to marry has a will, what's going to happen once you guys are married, are you going to be included in that will, are you going to update your own will, I hope you have a will, um, but these are conversations that you need to be having with your prospective partner and the the importance of having an anti-nuptial contract should never be underestimated and i urge you ladies to remember that having an anti-nuptial contract has nothing to do with how much you love someone but has everything to do with being practical and i always tell my clients that contracts aren't for when things are going good contracts are for in the event of a dispute and i'm a realist and i want everybody to be a realist and everybody to realize that in as much as we can live in a fantasy world and enjoy our marriage in the event that one of us gets into debt what is going to happen and these are the honest conversations that you and your partner should already be having i wish you all the best if you're engaged um but i also do want you to get in touch with me if you want your anti-nuptial contract drafted you can get hold of me on advice at sisterinlaw.co.za that is a d v i c e at sisterinlaw, one word, dot co, dot za. You can also get in touch with me on all my social media platforms at sisterinlaw and an underscore under each um, word is going to appear on your screen shortly. 
And yeah, you can also get in touch with me on a more personal note on bells underscore mutsane across the board as well. And yeah, if there's anything that you'd like to add to this, I really want you to put it in the comments below. And I'm going to put my website address for sister-in-law and my legal consulting company in the description box below. If you enjoyed this episode, do not forget to like and subscribe. That word gets me all the time. Do not forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, bye.